Hello and welcome back to the Way of Native Chronicles. Today we're going to discuss a subject that's been covered extensively in the past by many videos, by many instructors, but this is going to be a totally new angle to it. The uh, subject is on how to shoot accurately and how the brain, your brain, will actually fool you and cause you to miss. And if you understand how the brain works, this will give you an advantage in shooting and it will help you understand why certain techniques work better than others. What the whole concept basically boils down to is, according to brain science, I know it's a fancy term, I'm just going to call it brain science. Uh, they study the brain and they see how it works, how your perceptions are, are obtained from the real world. Your brain is something that has limited capacity. You have to scan in a lot of information around the world and process that through to your brain. Okay. What it boils down to is that you never actually see now. I'm going to explain that in a minute and how that affects your shooting. But the moment that we say now, what your brain sees is not actually there. That may sound a little, I don't know, disturbing, maybe counterintuitive, of course. I think if you follow along with what I'm going to explain to you here, that it'll come clear. And uh, this is pretty solid, solid science. Uh, and actually, you, even if you don't know the, the science, I'm going to give you some ways of assessing these claims uh, for yourself. And uh, you just have to think about it, and then you'll have to come, I think, to the conclusion that I'm bringing to this video. Now, when you're, when you're aiming a gun, let's say the, we have this a handgun, for instance. We're lining up the sights on the target. Uh, what you're going to see is basically something like this here. You're going to see your sights trying to remain steady on the target. Now, as we know, especially with the standing position, your sights are going to wave around a little bit. And you can see that in this demonstration here. This is typically what happens when you're, when you're aiming a gun, whether it's a rifle or a handgun or what have you. And what you're trying to do is keep that wavering around the target to a minimum. Uh, uh, because you want to get your shot where you want to get your shot. Now, what some people will do is they will let those sights waver around the target and then just when the sights kind of right on target, then they pull the trigger. And that's exactly what this video is going to address. Why that doesn't work. People have said this for a long time. I've said it for a long time that uh, you, if you want to get off a good shot, you really just have to commit to your trigger pull gradually increasing it, especially on a handgun, because the jerking of the gun by too rough of a trigger pull is just going to throw the gun off. So what you have to do is you just got to try to keep that, that motion as close to the bullseye as you can while you're increasing pressure on the trigger. And then when the shot goes off, it's going to be somewhere in that in that region that you were wavering around in. The same thing applies when you're hunting. If you're using a scope, and you can show that video right here. You're looking through the crosshairs at a deer. Same sort of problem. Even if you're taking a rest, if it's a long shot and you got your gun rested, there's always going to be a little bit of wavering around of your uh, crosshairs. And uh, what you're trying to do is keep that to a minimum, but when the shot is far, any tiny little bit of movement in your body, this unsteadiness is going to be magnified as you're looking at that distant target. So again, you're, you're trying to, your, your sights are never going to be, crosshairs are never going to be sitting absolutely motionless on the target. So what a lot of hunters will do is they'll pull that trigger once the shot is on. Now this doesn't work for a very basic reason and it's not going to be easy to explain but basically what your brain is doing is it's fooling you. It's telling you that what you see now is actually there now but it isn't. Now let me demonstrate that with, with an example. If you take uh, somebody throwing a fastball at you 
and they throw it, it goes in an arc, and it comes at you. Your brain cannot really react fast enough to process that information to catch that ball, but you actually do catch it. And that's because your brain, when it sees an object moving towards you, it knows what that kind of path is. And with practice, you start to learn that trajectory. Now, what you actually see when the person throws the ball is the ball is maybe here. Your brain captures that. But it takes about a tenth of a second for your brain to actually process all that information. And in that tenth, tenth of a second, the ball is already right, right on your glove pretty well. So how the heck do you catch that ball? The way you do it is your brain does what I call backfilling your memory. Uh, because your brain does not instantaneously process that visual information. What your brain does though is it takes that snapshot of information of that ball coming towards you and it projects the future of that and then it knows that at the, it kind of compensates for the fact that it can only process uh, so fast and it actually puts in your memory the sight of this ball coming right, you know, a tenth of a second later so that you can catch it. And that's based on the fact that it knows the trajectory of that ball. So when it sees, it shows you this ball here, you think you see it, but it's actually not there. You only saw it here, but your brain backfilled your memory so that it, at the, at the now instant, the ball is here. If you've done a lot of practice, you've, you've trained your mind to know where to expect that ball. So this all works really great when you're dealing with objects that move in a predictable manner, one that your brain knows how to deal with. But it all falls apart if you're dealing with a motion that's random, that there's no predicting where it's going to be. So it could be here, it could be there, it could be there, it could be there. It, it moves all over the place. Now, referring to these videos again, does that remind you of something? Your wavering of your sights on a target is completely random motion. Now, this actually comes into play because now your brain is going to still be backfilling your memory, predicting where the object is going to be next but it really has no way of predicting it. Same thing with your sights, you know, if, if they move a little bit this way or a little bit that way, it doesn't know which way it's going to go, but it's going to project information to you as if it's here. If you don't believe me, think about trying to slap a fly in midair. How hard is that? It's very difficult because a fly will fly in unpredictable motion and it messes with your brain. Your brain can't process it fast enough. Your brain will take a tenth of a second to take that visual information and from your eyes and deal with it. So your brain will process the information that the fly is here, and you're gonna slap it, and you wonder, how the heck could I miss it? I was sure I got it. But the fly never was there, and this is a key point to this whole video. The fly was not there. Your brain projected it being over there. And when you slapped, the fly wasn't here. It was over here. It made this kind of a turn instead of that turn. So um, it's uh, just one of those uh, basic facts of, of our physiology that we have to deal with. And, when I first learned about that, I thought, you know, that's interesting. It's, uh, 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 there's maybe some sort of connection to shooting with this. I mean, let's take another example just to show you what, what, what your brain can do to you. Um, if you take, a, take out a mirror, you can do this yourself and prove it to yourself. Take a mirror out and hold it in front of your face and look at it. Now, I want you to take, you can replay this video and follow follow this along later if you like. You take that mirror, you look at it, and now I want you to look at your left eye and then focus your attention on your right eye. Now this, here's the question, did you see your eyes move? Try it again for yourself. 
you're looking at your left eye, then you shift your attention to your right eye. You, you're just moving your eyeballs, right? But you can, your eyeballs did move to start looking over to the right. You didn't see your eyes move. And you think, well, you know, maybe just because uh, the brain uh, kind of chops up the, uh, the images and stuff like that. Uh, but no, your voice is coming through just fine. It's not getting chopped up. It's not doing that. Now you just, if you have somebody with you, you can get somebody. And the two of you look each other in the eyes. Have the other person focus on your left eye. And then have them focus on your right eye. What you'll see is that as soon as they change your focus to your other eye, you see their eyeballs move. So in one case, you're seeing the eyeballs move when they just make that slight adjustment. But when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't see your eyeballs move. And the reason for, for that being the case is that you're temporarily blind. When your eyes move, there's something about our anatomy that makes us blind. We cannot see our own eyes move if we're looking in the mirror. As when we move them, blindness, and then they stop, and you just see your eye a split second later focused on the other eye. So, but if you're looking at somebody else who is looking at you, your eyes are, standing, are staying still. And you watch their eyes, you'll see their eyes actually do move. So there's no doubt about it. You're temporarily blind when your eyes, eyeballs move. So it's just one of those type of things that um, should make you distrust the infallibility of your, of your senses to some extent. And not to remove your confidence, but to deal with the real facts that exist. The underlying issue here, as it affects shooting, is that what you think is the moment now doesn't really exist as far as your senses go. Your eyes are always backfilling information taken from a tenth of a second ago and projecting what will be uh, seen a tenth of a second later because they just, your, your brain eyeball to brain connection and processing just can't function at, at infinite speed. It takes a certain amount of time. So if you want to accomplish these kind of tasks, your brain has been designed to create a reality that is most often very helpful. It's whether you're driving a car or, or what have you. And the same thing applies when, when you're shooting a gun. So uh, if you're ever discussing with someone how best to shoot, keep this in mind. This subject of shooting, and trigger technique, and grip, uh, stance, all these things of shooting, being discussed in great, great detail for many years by many people far more experienced and intelligent than I am. But I think this is something that's worth bringing to the fore. The fact that you can't predict random motion and that your eyes will actually deceive you. So when your sights are wavering over that target, and they always will to some extent, don't ever think that you can pick a time. In fact, maybe a lot of you have seen that uh, before that, you know, you. They call calling your shots. I'm a little skeptical of that because when the gun goes off, you should be able to call your shot. To some extent, you can, but you can't really pick that time. What you're seeing when you pull that trigger, you think that the sights are lined up right on the bullseye. What you're seeing is not reality. You're seeing something that was projected from a tenth of a second ago. And in that amount of time, your sights can move quite a distance. So the best way to deal with this basic fact of our physiology is to take your gun, hold the sights, and try to keep them steady as you can while you're applying pressure on the trigger. And I think most good shooters will testify to this fact that that is the way to do it. You're just holding your sights steady, and as you get better, you can get a steadier hold. And you can s apply trigger pressure, especially in the case of a handgun, it's most difficult, applying trigger pressure without disturbing those sights and keeping those sights on target as the pressure on the trigger increases and then when the trigger breaks, it's actually a surprise. But you've been 
keeping those sites as to a small a region of movement during that whole process on that target that you want to hit. And overall, you're going to get a far better score or a higher likelihood of hitting the animal you're aiming at by doing it that way. If you pick a time, you're picking a time based on reality that doesn't exist. So I'd like to just kind of bring that forward. There are other reasons for not picking a time uh, to shoot, to just increasing your pressure instead and squeezing off the shot, such as avoiding flinching. Again, that becomes a bigger issue with handguns, but it also affects rifle shooters. Temptation to pull the trigger when the time is right is very great. Sometimes shooters have a hard time even getting, getting that trigger pull to go off because they, they start to increase pressure on the trigger and their sights are start to waver off a little bit. They let off pressure and then they start to come back to the target and they increase pressure again and, and it's, it becomes a struggle, kind of a, there's a, a mental tension involved there and you just can't get that shot off. What you're far better off doing is just getting that gun, getting your aim on, and increasing pressure until the gun goes off. That way you don't know exactly what instant it's going to go off, and you, so you can't flinch as a result. And you won't be tempted to give it up. Even if you don't flinch, you're, you're going to get a smoother trigger pull. So, you, you know, it's just the best way to do it. So, in a sense, things that have been taught as far as shooting technique still apply. This video is not really changing anything, but it's giving you an additional argument for yourself or for people you're speaking to for doing a steady, constant trigger pull instead of picking a time and how important that is. So. Maybe you thought it was important before. Knowing this, hopefully you think it's even more important. So that's what I have today for the Way to Native Chronicles. If you have some comments or some questions on the subject, I'd be happy to go into it into more detail. I think uh, this is something that uh, can be of interest to the shooters and helpful. Everybody approaches shooting from a different way. For some people, this may make more sense. Others, it may just kind of right over their head and say well whatever but you know the the science the study of the brain has advanced a lot over the years and a lot of this information wasn't really available back in the old days and so as we uh, gain knowledge about ourselves it's good to kind of update and check what our assumptions are and see if they they stand up to that kind of uh, scrutiny so as I said thanks for watching this is the way to Native Chronicles, and I hope you subscribe. But click the bell also, and you'll get notifications when a new video comes out. You have doubt. Isn't that, that's the kind we saw.